Aseus of Samos claimed that Pelasgus was the first man born of the earth. This account features centrally in the construction of an enduring Autochthonous Arcadian identity into the classical period. In a fragment by Pausanias, he cites Aseus, who described the foundational hero of the Greek ethnic groups as godlike Pelasgus, whom the black earth gave up. Sophocles, in one of his famous plays, presents Inachus as an elder in the lands of Argos, the Heron Hills, and among the Tirsinoi Pelasgoi. An unusual hyphenated noun construction, Tirsinians Pelasgians, interpretation is open, even though translators typically make a decision, but the Tirsinians may well be the ethonym Tirinoi, a possible connection to the city of Tyre, which is a possible location where the Minoan migrants moved to. All of this comes into context when we examine the writings of Pherecides of Syros, the famous pre-Socratic, who claims to have in his possession the Pelasgian creation myth, who he says was given to him by the Phoenicians. The sequence of Pherecides' creation myth is as follows. First, there are eternal gods, Zas, or Zeus, Cthoni, or Gaia, and Kronos. Then Kronos creates elements and niches in the earth with his seed, from which other gods arise. This is followed by three-day wedding of Zas and Cthoni. On the third day, Zas makes the robe of the world, which he hangs from a winged oak, and then presents it as a wedding gift to Cthoni and wraps around her. Before the world is ordered, a cosmic battle takes place with Kronos as the head of one side and Ophion the serpent, dragon, as the leader of the other. Ophion attacks Kronos, who defeats him and throws him in the underworld. Sometime after this battle with Ophion, Kronos is succeeded by Zas. Kronos is then given control of the underworld as the king of Elysium, the great province of Hades where the gods dwell. These three primordial gods are eternal, equal, and wholly responsible for the world order. Plato seems to borrow from this cosmology in his Timaeus and echoes of a trinity sprinkled down into later Christian theology. Pherecydes and Thales, who are both of the seven sages of Greece, are both known to have influenced monotheism, as they both believe the gods to be servants and messengers, daemons and angelos, angels, under the one, or monad, the source of all light, creation, and wisdom. When Robert Graves reconstructed the Pelasgian creation story, Many similarities between the story and the book of Genesis are present. Aeschylus is another source for the Pelasgians. In Aeschylus's play, the suppliants, the Danids, fleeing from Egypt, seek asylum from King Pelasgus of Argos, which he says is on the Strymon including Parabia in the north, the Thessalian Dodona, and the slopes of Pindus Mountains on the west, and the shores of the sea on the east. That is a territory including, but somewhat larger, than classical Pelasgioitis. Apis, a seer of Apollo, claimed to rule the Pelasgians and to be the child of Pele Cthon, or the ancient earth from which the earth brought forth. The Danads call the country Apian Hills after him. They claim to descend from the ancestors in ancient Argos and that they are of a dark race. Pelasgus admits that the land was once called Apia and compares them to the women of Libya and Egypt.
the Pulaskians are often associated with the construction of cyclopean or megalithic structures, characterized by the use of massive limestone blocks fitted together without mortar. The most famous example is the ancient citadel of Mycenae in Greece, attributed to the great Mycenaean civilization. But wait, if the Pelasgians are truly the indigenous people of Thessaly and Thrace, then why did Homer and Hesiod link them to the Cretans? Which brings us to the next region of prehistoric Greece, the Minoans. Ancient Crete has evidence of being inhabited by Stone Age people and even small settlements that date to 7000 BCE and down through the Copper Age and Bronze Age. The Bronze Age Minoan civilization of Crete had a distinctive and influential religious system. Minoan religion flourished from 3000 to 1000 BCE featuring a complex pantheon of gods and goddesses, intricate rituals, and a strong emphasis on nature worship. Its impact on later Greek civilization, particularly the Mycenaeans and subsequent Greek cultures, can be observed in several aspects. Some of the prominent figures included the mother goddess, often associated with fertility and nature, depicted with serpents wrapped around her and the bull god, symbolizing strength and virility. These deities played significant roles in the Minoan religious beliefs and rituals. The Minoans revered the natural world, with a particular emphasis on the sacredness of mountains, caves, trees, and bodies of water. This emphasis on nature worship influenced the later Greeks such as the veneration of sacred groves for Pan and Dionysus, and natural landmarks. The Minoans engaged in elaborate rituals and ceremonies and had the use of many plants and substances, mixing with grain and vine, making alcoholic potions for ceremonies and religious practices. These practices included the processions of the gods, dances, offerings, bowl leaping rituals, and these ceremonies fostered community cohesion and reinforced the religious beliefs and cultural identity. The rituals were often depicted in their art and murals, iconography, such as the double axes, bull horns, and snakes were prevalent, representing religious symbols and mythological motifs. These artistic representations influenced the visual language of later Greek art, as seen in frescoes and sculptures. The Minoans had significant cultural and commercial exchanges with the Mycenaeans, another Bronze Age civilization on mainland Greece. The Mycenaeans adopted and adapted elements of Minoan religious practices, including certain deities like Dionysus and ritualistic aspects. These influences, in turn, played a role in shaping subsequent Greek religious traditions. 